everybody. Woohoo! It is a Friday, beautiful Friday in March in Utah, because that's where I'm at, is in Utah. And I welcome you this morning. I welcome you to the Body Language Hot Seat. And this month, as you saw, we're, we're doing a series of these this year, which I'm super excited about. And what we're doing is that each month of the year, we will have a different focus for our hot seat. And this month, our focus is trouble with goals. Any kind of trouble that we have with goals, because I'm just curious, raise your hand for me so I can see if my buttons work here. If you've had any trouble with goals in your life, have you had any trouble setting a goal, wanting a goal, achieving a goal, um, being resentful with a goal, being angry at your goal, um, resenting other people's goals, any kind of trouble with goals, just raise your hand for me. All right, awesome. Because that way I know that you have also found your raise the hand button because on your screen, depending on if you're on your phone or your computer, it'll be at the bottom or at the top or the side, but look around and find your raise the hand button because that's one of the ways that you and I get to um, interact during this webinar today. Uh, the second way that we get to interact is through our chat. So if you can find your chat and in the chat, tell me, actually in the chat, just say, I am so happy today or whatever emotion you are. You don't have to pick happy, but whatever you are, Tell me what your emotion is this, this beautiful Friday in March, okay? So Tammy is excited. Catherine is thrilled. Um, David is excited. Deb is excited. Emmy is happy. Kelly is excited. Hey, a lot of excited. I like that. Um, Livia is grateful. Julie is hopeful. Diana is hopeful. I love it. Um, optimistic. Tim is optimistic. Excellent. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, Lisa is energized. I like that one. Carla is excited. Well, those are awesome emotions, you guys. I love it, love it, love it. And you don't have to pick a good one. You can be honest with me. I am somebody who I have been in places in my life where I couldn't even find a positive emotion in my life. So I am somebody you can be honest with. If you're not feeling a positive emotion this morning, you can tell me that in the chat. That is absolutely legal. Um, so I welcome you because we are going to talk about trouble with goals and we're gonna interact by raising the hand by the comments. And then the third way that some of you might choose to interact with me today is to be on stage. Because at a body language hot seat, you have the opportunity, if you choose, you do not have to choose, you have the opportunity to choose to raise your hand and have the option to be on stage with me. And on stage means simply that you will, um, you will have the chance to come on your camera and your microphone to work with me one-on-one -on -one for 15 minutes in front of everybody. No pressure, right? Actually, it's a super safe, powerful experience. Any of you who have ever, who's ever been on stage with me, either in a live event or in a Zoom event? Raise your hand just so, because I'm kind of curious who has been. Oh, a few of you, awesome. Excellent, very cool. Well, welcome back, you guys that have been on stage with me before. I've worked with, on stage, I've worked on stage in front of live audiences. I have now worked with thousands of people, multiple thousands of people on stage in front of other people. And so it is a very safe place. But the cool thing about it is you don't have to go first if you don't want to. You can watch me work with somebody else. And then if you see that, OK, maybe this is all right, you can choose the second time. Because what I'll have you do is raise your hand each time it's time to choose somebody. And so you'll have a chance more than once to choose in to coming on stage. Now, to be on stage, there's a few things that we got to take care of. 
One of them is you need to have filled out this form and signed it at 3ke.to forward slash on stage. So what is this? This is the mentoring agreement. When people choose to work with me one-on-one -on -one or in groups or, or on stage at the body language hot seat, everybody fills out the same form because I am going to mentor you. So I need to know that I have permission to mentor you because nowhere are we ever going to take away somebody's um, choice. And so you get to choose permission if you want to work with me. And that's how we know that you've chosen in. Sorry, I gotta fix my screens right here so I can see everybody's names. There we go. And then, so you have to have filled this out. Then when I ask for the volunteers, you'll raise your hand. And then I have the amazing Adam and Wayne in the background who are going to quickly check through your name and see if you signed this agreement. So if you have signed the agreement and you have raised your hand and you have your video ready, that means you check your background and your sound and you aim your camera. So you, you make sure that in the background, it's not pointing at um, anybody that doesn't want to be in the picture. And if all of those things are in place, then you get to come up on stage and work with me for 15 minutes. Cool? All right. Just curious, who would want to do that? Raise your hand. Remember, there's no have tos. Just curious, who would want to? Oh, some of you would already choose into that. That's fantastic. I love it. Very cool. So this is an example picture of about how much of your video I would like to see. If you can't show this much of your video, if you can sh at least show your shoulders and your head, then because I am a body language expert, so I do like to watch your answers as much as listen to your answers um, or what you're saying. So I ask you questions and I watch your answers and I listen for your answers. Because what I wanna know is where do they not match? Where does your body language answer and the words coming out of your mouth, where's there a disconnect? Or when you don't know an answer, because sometimes people will say to me, well, I don't know the answer. And I'm like, well, you know more answers than you think you do. And your body language will help tell some of those answers. So I realized I forgot to clean off my camera just so we make sure there's no smudges because it's no fun to look through a smudgy camera, huh? Um, so you want to have your video look like this, okay? And so then I'll go back to the rules, okay? To be on stage, you must have filled out the mentoring agreement, raise your hand when asked to, check the background of your video, try to be standing up, even I'm standing up today, which that's pretty fun, um, and try to make it so that your hands are, you don't have to have your feet visible, okay? That's okay. Um, but so like this, okay? And if, if, if you can't get that much, if you can at least get that much, see like that, that would be fantastic if you can do that, okay? So those are the rules for being on stage today. Then the last thing is this, remember, um, um, hard to take, but best ever once passed my barrier. Oh, I love it. Yeah, Catherine's telling me about her experience being on stage. And Jeannie is saying hi to Adam and Wayne in the background, awesome. So just so you know where I'm looking at my screens here, over here when I'm looking this way, I'm looking at the chat and, the, um, and where people are raising their hands, okay? Because I have you over here. Over here on this screen, I have my slide deck. And then here in the middle, I'm going to have your video if you choose to be on stage with me. Cool? All right, so if you have any questions about being on stage, go ahead and type them in the chat because I have these amazing backup people today that are supporting us that will help answer those questions. Um, 
So I just got to tell you really quick that, um, well, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. So one of my questions is, and I want you to answer this in the chat, and it's a long question, so let's bear with me for a second. There are many things that we can struggle with with goals. Because in life, our whole purpose, our whole purpose of setting goals is to be able to create something new. So I'm curious, there's different ways I've noticed that I struggle with goals. One of them is wanting them. One of them is choosing them. Like, I don't know what to put on my vision board. I don't know what to choose for a goal. One of them is uh, achieving the goal. Because once I've got it on my vision board or once I've chosen the goal, how do I make it happen? Okay, so out of wanting, setting, and accomplishing a goal, which ones have you, do you struggle with? Put that in the chat for me, okay? And you can pick more than one, but wanting the goal. So wanting could be, I just I have nothing I want in my life. I don't know what to want. Or it can be setting the goal and, and choosing it and then not really wanting to follow through with it or changing your mind a lot. So wanting, choosing, or accomplishing a goal. What do you struggle with? And I want everyone to answer, okay? Even if you're not sure, pretend you're sure. Pretend you know and choose one of them, okay? Um, follow through, wanting and choosing, achieving, achieving, choosing and accomplishing, wanting, accomplishing, um, overcoming fear of achieving the goal, accomplishing, waiting for it to happen, and then in the waiting, realizing I don't know if I need it anymore. Yeah, so not wanting, achieving, simply setting. Excellent. I love it, guys. All of these are great answers. Now, the reason it's, a, it's good to answer a question, even if you're not sure of the answer, is it opens up doors in your brain for more answers. Did you know that? If you, put, if you start to answer a question, it actually has this door in your brain that opens up and helps you have access to more answers. So the next question is, and this one you raise your hand for me, who would like to be able to accomplish their goals faster? Raise your hand for me. If you would like to be able to accomplish your goal faster. Fantastic. Okay. So my name is Ann Washburn. I work with this fantastic company, Three Key Elements, and this is my 14th year that I have been working with this company. And that is kind of crazy for me to say that. But I must tell you that 14 years ago, the person I was was very different than this person you see standing in front of you today. Because the person I was back then was somebody who never chose goals. I didn't know how, I didn't feel confident. I didn't think I could accomplish the goals. In fact, I avoided all people. I felt like nobody liked me. I felt like I was always in trouble. And I felt like life was stacked against me, that life worked out for other people, but it didn't work out for people like me. And it was a very frustrating place to be. I felt like all my relationships struggled, that I didn't have, um, I didn't have anything that I really wanted. I had things that I sort of wanted, but not really. I felt like I took the, I took the scraps, the leftovers of life. Has anybody ever felt like you just got the leftovers of life? Or is that just me? Oh, there's a few of us, right? And I was really frustrated. I was really frustrated living in the leftovers of life because I look around and I thought, you know what? I'm not, I'm not dumb. I'm not, um, I'm not gross. I'm not, I'm like, I couldn't figure out why I could only have the leftovers. And, but I always lived in the fringes on, and in the leftovers. And I really wanted something different for my life. And one day I found myself, I'd left, I'd sent my kids to school and I found myself crying on the floor of the family room. And as I was crying on the floor of the family room, I, um, I had the thought 
that it wasn't worth it anymore. That all everyone in my family, everyone in my life would be better off with than without this person who was attracting only the leftovers of life. And that's not what I wanted for my kids. That's not what I wanted for my husband. That's not what I wanted for anybody in my life. And I felt like I was the common denominator of the less than. I was the common denominator of everything less than. And I thought, that is just not what I want anymore. But I'm an engineer and by training, by schooling, and I am a problem solver. That's what engineers do. And so although I was sitting in this, in this puddle of less thanness, I wanted to see if there was any way to get out of it. I wanted to see if there was any option other than just taking myself out of the picture. And so I began to study. And 14 years ago, I don't know if you guys remember that long ago. I mean, that was a long time ago. But that was really before the cell phones. The, I mean, not the cell phones, the smartphones. That was before we had really great things to research online. And I had to start snail researching what could be different. And this is where I came across body language. This was the point in my life that I came across body language and realized that your subconscious, your subconscious sends messages through your body language that your conscious mind is unaware of. So let me say that one more time. Your subconscious sends messages out to the world that your conscious mind is unaware of. And people pick up on those messages. And I thought, oh, wait a second. I'm sending messages to people that I don't know what they are. I'm like, I didn't sign up for that. I did not, I don't remember signing the waiver that said, I can send messages out to the world and I don't know what they are. When that, when, I don't know that I would sign that waiver, but somehow coming to earth, I signed the waiver that said, I can send messages out to people around me and have no idea what those messages are. And I'm like, whoa, wait a second. I am not cool with this and I need to find out what I have been sending. And so that's when I jumped into the world of body language. That's where I left my career of flight simulation and explosives. And I jumped into the world of body language and being a coach and a mentor to people. Because I'm like, I hear I'm getting these body language superpowers, but I can't let them not be used for the people that I can see the messages in. Because once I learned my body language, I not only could see messages I was sending, but I could see messages other people were sending. And I'll be, I'll be really honest with you. When I first, back at the beginning, probably 12 years ago, I remember um, I was getting really clear on the messages that people were sending. And I walked in one morning into a Walmart, not far from my house. In fact, Around my house, within 10 miles of my house, there's probably five Walmarts. You know, there's just Walmarts everywhere now. But I remember I walked into this Walmart and I started walking just to get the stuff I needed at Walmart. And I started walking down the aisles and I started looking at all the messages that people were sending in their body language. And I realized there was so many messages of hurt, of misunderstanding, of less thanness. I don't know if I've ever shared this story. And that, remember, I had I had I had laid on the floor in my family room in a puddle of less thanness. I was the common denominator of less thanness in my life. And now here I was walking through a Walmart and I could see the less than ness coming out in everyone's body language. And I ran out of that Walmart and I sat in my car and I cried. 
I just cried and cried and cried because I'm like, I don't know if I can handle being able to see the hurt that is going on inside of people. And that's when I had to make the choice. What would I do with my abilities of body language? Would I turn them off, quit using them, not want that second language anymore? Or would I choose to help people every chance I got to access more of their amazingness? Which one do you think I chose? Well, based on the fact that we're here together this morning, I got to tell you, I chose the second one. I chose to help people access more of their amazingness. I chose to dedicate my life to helping people access more of that amazingness because I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to sit in the puddle of less thanness. Raise your hand if you've ever felt that puddle or that deep ocean of less thanness. And I just want to see, yeah, see at least a third of us have felt that before. And or raise your hand if you know somebody who sits in that puddle of less thanness. Right? And I'm not okay with that. So that's what I do every day of my life is I help people, I I I throw a life preserver into the ocean of less thanness. So I, I gotta write that down. Somebody should write that down for me, Adam. That's what I do as a body language expert. I throw a life preserver into the ocean of less thanness and give people a chance to access more of their amazingness. And that's what I want for you. Any of you that have chosen into my world for any period of time, you know that I don't let go. I want people, I want people to know that you have access to more. Oh, this is not how I plan to start the webinar this morning. But you know what, guys? You matter. You matter so much. And your ability to achieve your goals actually pulls you out of that ocean of less thanness because now we start creating our life instead of having our life just happen to us because life the the, the thing about our planet is that we live on a timeline a forward timeline um we live on a timeline that moves forward we have no choice but to stay on the forward trajectory of time. But where we do have a choice is what that timeline will feel like. We do have a choice on that. And I didn't know that 14 years ago. I didn't know I had a choice. And I choose to shine a light of choice. I can't make choices for you, but I can shine a light of choice. And that's what I'm gonna do today. So if you choose to get into my space for any period of time, just know that's who I am. That's what I choose to be. That's, I choose to be a lighthouse. I can't be a lifeboat, but I do choose to be a lighthouse. So this is what I've done, some of the things that I've done in the last 14 years. I've been on national television, I've done a TED talk, I've done, um, I've helped thousands of people on stage. I've done, I've done some fun things that I never would have guessed I would have on my resume 14 years ago, all in the name of throwing that life preserver into that ocean of less than this because I was drowning in it. I was drowning in it. Um, so I hope that's okay. I was supposed to ask you permission if I could tell you that story first, but I didn't even know I was gonna use that story. So who needs a life preserver? Do any of you need one? Because if you don't need one, we can totally talk about something else today. But if you need one, Okay, there's a few of us that need a life preserver. Awesome, awesome. So as we get ready to have our 
first person chosen to come up on stage, I want to just teach you something really quick about goals. Um, and then you're going to need a pen and a paper because I'm going to have you answer some questions. So when it comes to a vision board, I mean a vision board, oh, and come on, use your words. When it comes to life and creating where we're moving, let me just move some things off of here and talk to you about um, and talk to you about life for a second. So let's, here we go. So here is a timeline of life, okay? And in life, we have past experiences, we have present experiences, and we have future experiences that have not happened yet. And what goals are for, this right here, this is where our goals are. What goals are for is to help us to organize our future. Our past is solid. There's only one of them, okay? You can't, and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna say something a little, well, maybe I'll tone it down a little bit. I was gonna say it really radical, but I think I'll just say it kind of radical. I love your past. I love your past. And some of you will probably say, well, I hate my past. Why do you love my past? I love your past because it isn't who you are, but it is experiences that you have had. And those are two very different things. So your past, your past doesn't need to be different. But you know what can be different and does need to be different? The future. The future is something to be different. The past is not something to be different. The past was some experiences that you went through. And some of them might have been awful. Some of them might have been wonderful. Some of them might have been neutral. You had all kinds of experiences. But your past, your past has given you opportunities to um, have things to let go of, to have things to see your world through. It's made you who you are today. What you do with the future, this matter that you haven't organized yet, because there are, in your future, there are thoughts, emotions, beliefs, relationships, behaviors, um, imagery, surround your physical surroundings, all of these things in your future have not been organized yet. They haven't. They are still in they're still in disorganization. But as you organize your future, you become a brighter version of you. And so when we set a goal, one of the best and brightest and most beautiful reasons to have a goal is to know how we want to organize this matter that has not yet been organized. This is where the opportunity of different lies, not here. And yeah, I know all, there's all the pieces of I need to look at my past differently or I need to reframe it or I need to, yeah, 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 we can do all of that. But the reason to do that is organizing the future, not the past. The past is not who you are. It's just experiences. But we tend to use our past to, to define us solidly as if this is all we are. But when we do that, what we're doing is we're getting trapped in our past. And if I get trapped in my past, it becomes, and now I'm dragging the past with me. Now I, I, I collide with my future and I struggle to organize that future in any way other than what the past already was. Did you catch that? So let me say that one more time. 
if I drag my past with me, then it's going to be really hard to make the future look any different than what the past was. This is why people will repeat situations and relationships and um, results over and 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 over again is because they're dragging their past up their timeline instead of saying, wait, my past doesn't get to decide who I am. My future is what I am organizing. My future gets to decide. Because you know the cool thing about the future? It becomes your past. As soon as, as soon as today is over, it goes into your past. And my intention today is that you, your past becomes better today because you came to this event. What you do today makes your past better because tomorrow, today will be in the past. The best way to change the past is change today and let it be in the past tomorrow. That's what goals are for. That's what goals are for. I had this silly little goal, you guys. I had this silly goal. Oh, it made me want to cry. I had this silly goal that I wanted to be able to wear a belt. <laughs> and some of you are like, that's the dumbest goal I've ever heard. It was a big deal to me. I've never really, I've never had a waist. I've never had a waist. I just genetically I'm built like a rectangle and I never had a waist and I wanted to be able to wear a belt and that might seem like such a and look today I'm wearing a belt see I'm wearing a belt I'm so excited I'm wearing a belt because but in order to get to a place where I could wear a belt I had to take every present day and do something different with it so that I moved into my past evidence that I could wear a belt. Does that, oh, does that sound just crazy? Um, I didn't think I was gonna ever tell anybody that I had a goal to wear a belt, but I did. But part of that goal was because of, it doesn't matter, no time for that. Um, but I had this goal, I wanted to wear a belt. And so that meant that when I, um, didn't want to get up and go to the gym, that I would remember my goal and I would take today and I would organize it. So let's make a today right here. I would take and we'll make our today kind of yellow. Yeah, because there's, there's my today that I'm organizing. And as I'm organizing today, I'm having thoughts about my goal. Because as I'm organizing today, I can either have thoughts about my goal or I can have thoughts about my past. And the one that I focus on more decides, is today going to match my past or is it going to match my goal? Write that on your paper. Is today going to match my past or is today going to match my goal? Um, I'm going to write it down too. Is today going to match my past or is it going to match my goal? Because the thing is, very little, how do I want to say this? Very little of what we, um, choose for goals it can we really take with us after we leave this life like i'm not going to take my belt with me i'm not even going to take my waist with me but i'm going to take my but i'm going to take my ability to transform myself that i will take with me that i will take with me oh my gosh trish that's so exciting i love that um Trish says, I had a goal to fit in the booths at the Texas Roadhouse, and last week I fit. <laughs> that is so awesome. Big round of applause for Trish. So proud of you. It's tough. It's tough to set our goals and then to choose every day 
that today is going to match my goals. It's not going to match my past. So that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for today. I want to help you find out why you're letting the past matter more to you than your future. I'm try I'm here to help you see why you are avoiding choosing a goal or you self-sabotage that goal. Did you guys read my story I sent to you? I sent you an email yesterday with a story about worry and how worry can sabotage you. Worry is pretend action. Worry is pretend control. And worry is self-sabotage. So maybe you get stuck in worry. Well, whatever you're getting stuck in, I want to help you. I want to help you today. So are you in? Do you want some help with your goals? Um, oh, there's so many things I want to just talk about goals. I want to just talk about goals the whole time. But we better get some people on stage. So pull out your pen and paper. Pull out your pen and paper. We're going to take a few more minutes here because remember, asking questions opens doors in your brain for new information. And I want you all ready for new information. Yep. Worry is pretend control and pretend action. Absolutely. And so if you didn't read that email that I sent yesterday with that story, um, I highly recommend it because that was that was a, a light bulb moment for me to realize how I was using worry. Hey, so when you've got your paper and pen, let me lower the hands here. Raise your hand when you've got your paper and pen ready. So I know we have it's time to answer our questions. All right, fantastic. So just so you know, we've got three sheets of questions today because I'm here to help you be more like your future. Is that exciting? That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you be more like your future. Okay. Um, so the first question is, first question is, where are you stuck or holding back? I ask this question every single month because guess what? We get stuck or holding back. So don't think too hard about it. Put the first thing that comes to mind. Where are you stuck or holding back? Okay, ready? Next question. And you'll need these if, when you're chosen to come up on stage. Okay, what is being stuck stopping you from accomplishing? Wow. You guys are a cool group. I'm actually really excited about this. Number three, what do you wish you would have done last year? Number four, describe a repeating problem in your life. Remember, don't think too hard. First things that come to mind. Number five, who in your life do you wish would be different? Who in your life do you wish would be different? What do you worry about most often? What do you worry about? Is it people? Is it your house? Is it about what people think about you? Is it about 
um, a problem? What is it? What do you worry about most often? And how many hours a day do you worry about things outside of your current control? Put a number. How many hours a day? First number that comes to mind. How many hours? If you do nothing today, except for answer these questions, you're going to be ahead of where you were yesterday. Because awareness is the first step to change. Okay. All right. Got all of those? So these are pre goal. So these are pre goal questions. As I was, so I told you I'm an engineer, I'm a researcher, I'm a problem solver. And so I read a lot. I read a lot so that I can, um, because my specialty is to be able, is being able to take big concepts and pull them into simplified models and um, teaching so that we can use them. We take the, the big concept and make it actionable. That's what I do every single week in breakthrough coaching and in my personal mentoring is I help people take whatever they're struggling with and have an actionable step forward. Okay, write that down on your paper, actionable step forward. Because so, a lot of times we get concepts. I, <clears throat> I get so frustrated with books that all they do is they just talk about the problem and they kind of give fluffy or big, vague answers. I'm like, no, what's the simple step forward? And so as I was researching, I found this list of questions from um, Jordan Peterson. So whether you like him or not, doesn't matter. But these questions are really good for checking in with where we're at in our life and helps us to know what categories we might need to look at for setting a goal. So let's ask these, um, let's ask these questions right here. Have you been educated to the level of your intellectual ability or ambition? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I like this because one of the goals we can have is to get more education. Education is a valuable, so all of these questions are questions about how am my interpersonal relationships and one of the and interpersonal relationships is one of the things we're wired for as humans we need interaction with other people and so this can help us see where i i need a goal okay so have you been educated to the level of your intellectual ability or ambition in other words have you gotten the schooling you wanted number two what do you do in your free time? Ooh, is it engaging, meaningful, or productive? Because in our free time, oh, I have been so tempted to spend my free time binging junk activities. So I could binge a junk activity like, um, like a YouTube rabbit hole, right? Or playing a video game or eating junk food, or any of that kind of stuff. And, and that's a good point, Tammy. What if I don't have free time? If you don't schedule yourself free time, then you need to look at what are the priorities because you are a common denominator for everything in your life. And so maybe you're a personality that just wants everything scheduled, but what is your option time spent in okay that's what this could be you could read this as my optional time what do i use it for so i have to spend time every day um, grooming myself taking care of me eating sleeping those things have to happen taking care of my family those things have to happen but the optional time not all of our time is spent in have to's what do i spend my my option time in. Next question. Do you have a solid or well-defined plan for the future? 
um, one month, one year, or three years? Are you or those close to you free of serious health or economic problems? These are just quick yes, no. Well, that one's not yes, no, but they're mostly yes, no. Number five, do you have friends and regular social interactions? Do you have a stable and satisfying intimate partnership? So a spouse or a boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever that means to you. Number seven, do you have a close and do you have close and functional familial relationships? And number eight, do you have a career or a job that is financially sufficient, stable, and if possible, a source of satisfaction and opportunity? So now, I, if you answered no to three or more of these, then a good place to set a goal would be in one of your no areas. It would be in one of your no areas. because. If, if you, so there's eight questions here, and if three or more of them are no's that you don't have them, um, so you don't have good free time or a plan for the future or the education or family relationships, whatever it is, if you answered no to three or more of these, then you need a goal in one of those no areas. Does that make sense? Raise your hand if you understood what I just explained. Okay, good. So this was really interesting to me because I thought sometimes it's hard for us to know when I'm, when I'm allowed to have satisfaction from life. Sometimes it's hard to know. And, um, and so to me, I would add, I would add that this right here, do you have a close functional familial relationships, might need to add in here a close functional higher power relationship as well. That would be another one that I would add because I, I already adjusted these questions. Um, do you have a functional higher power relationship? And um, do you have a functional self relationship? Okay, so I would add those. And so you need to answer these. And if three or more have a no, then you need a goal in one of those areas. Did that make sense? Okay, was that like a light bulb for anybody else? To me, that was like a big spotlight that shined on my life. And I was like, oh my gosh, I finally know where to set my goals. Because, okay, Lillian and me, we're on the same page. Oh, and Jerry, awesome. Um, anybody else, anybody else get a little more clear? Raise your hand or tell me in the chat. Okay. So that helped me a lot because I'm like, oh, now I know where to set a goal. I don't know where, and I know not only where, but why. Because sometimes I don't know where and I don't know why to set the goal, okay? So, so these are my questions that I've, out of, out of my research that I've adopted for me to know how and where to set a goal, okay? Um, Right, Maxine? Great place to launch from. Great um, and great comment. So this is on our website. If you go and do the vision board training, this is the vision board roadmap. So these are this is a visual representation of areas that we can set a goal. And I've looked at this for years, right? But the but the but this right here actually helped me see why I was doing it. Because I'm like, sure, I can set all of these goals, but why am I doing it? Well, now I'm more clear on why. I'm more clear on why. Okay, I could just teach this whole time, but we got to get people up on stage. So 
Um, so let's go back to this screen right here. Okay, so that great comment, Cindy. So Cindy says, I think my goals have been about fixing my past, not building my future. Exactly. So this is my intention today is to help all of us face our future instead of walking through life backwards, facing our past. Because how many of you walk through life? And let me stop sharing my screen here for a second. How many of you walk through life backwards? There's the future, but all you do is stare at your past. I want us all to be able to turn around and face our future. Face our future because the future is what we're here for. You're not here for your past. You're here for your future. I get a little, a little animated about this because it matters, right? Okay, so to be on stage, you need to have filled out your question, your, your form. Come on and share the screen. There we go. You filled out your form and then, um, yes, stop getting sucked backwards into your past. Love it. Now I need my hands. All right. So anybody who would like to be on stage, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. And remember, we're going to talk about your goals. We're going to talk about your goals. Right, Lisa? We would turn into a pillar of salt by only focusing at our past. Very well said, Lisa. All right. So Adam and Wayne are going to get check the names and they're going to get me a list of people who are eligible to come up on stage. All right, so while we're waiting for them to do that, thank you everybody who raised your hand. And remember, you'll have another chance in a few minutes to raise your hand again. So I just wanna thank you guys for showing up early in the morning. Well, it's early in the morning here. Some of, it's some of you, it's probably earlier, some of you it's later, but thank you for showing up for our our webinar this morning and being willing to come on camera, right? I'm like, we gotta be, that means I have to be wearing um, not my pajamas and I have to have combed my hair at least. So I want to just show you while we're waiting for those names, I wanna show you um, Let me, I'll find it here. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Where'd it go? I got my slides out. Oh, there we go. Okay. I want to show you that when we're moving towards our future, when we're moving towards our future and we're getting sucked into our past, this is one of the reasons why we won't want our future, why we won't want what, what we set as a goal, why we will give up on it, is because we are, we are more focused on the past. Um, and so this is what I said uh, on my, in my own journal. I said, I need a past retirement party. I need to retire my past and tell it that I don't need it any, I don't need it to dominate my life anymore. And then I need, um, my goal is my new employee onboarding. I'm going to um, onboard my new employee, which is my goal, because I want these goals to be what I'm excited about. I don't want to get all uppity about my past. I want my future um, to get to decide why uh, why I get up in the morning. I want my future to be what I'm making today out of. Does that make sense? Okay. So I just got my message. All right. So our first person on stage today is Vicki Bushnell. Vicki Bushnell is our very first person on stage. 
So Vicki, what's going to happen is we're going to send you a message that you get to be on camera, and then it's going to feel like you are disconnected for a second while Zoom makes it possible for you to share your camera. So you are going to follow through those steps, and then we'll be able to see you on camera. Yay, Vicki, Tammy says. Where did my, hey everybody, give Vicki a round of applause as she comes up on stage. And now I gotta figure out how oh. I can see her. There we go. You have to play with the lighting for a minute. Awesome. Is that better? That's great, it's so fun to see you, Vicki. Great to see you. Thank you for choosing me. Apps. Well, thanks for raising your hand. Um, so tell me, what do you struggle with about goals, Vicki? So I am in theater, as you know, and prior to COVID, I had all kinds of theater opportunities. The first 10 shows I auditioned for, I got cast in seven or eight of them. It was just like click and click and click, and, which is very unusual, especially for someone who starts into theater in their later years of maturity. <laughs> and so since COVID, I had two roles that were delayed because of COVID crazy. And I finished those two shows. And since then, I haven't been cast in any shows. I've auditioned a bunch of times and I've gotten a bunch of callbacks, but I haven't been cast in any shows. So I'm wondering if there's something that I'm doing non-verbally that may be impacting my theater opportunities. Um, and so let's just start there. Let's start there. Well, what's next after that? Uh, I've been doing uh, training. So I've been taking classes at Hale Sandy, which is a great theater here that has lots of opportunities to meet with directors and uh, people that are involved in the theater community. And I have started taking some dance classes because with theater, there's character acting, there's singing, and there's dancing for music theater, which is what I do. And so I felt like dancing was probably my, well, not probably, it was my least strong thing in those three areas. And so I've been taking a dance class that's a movement class and does some choreography from shows. And I've continued my voice lessons to keep that talent good. And character acting is just kind of what I do. So that's kind of my strength. So I've worked on improving my weaknesses and maintaining my strengths. And so there we are. Awesome. So tell me, what does it mean about you um, if you don't get cast in roles? So it's a hobby. It's not like my livelihood. So I'm not going to lose, you know, food and shelter if I don't do that. But it is a way of expression for me. And it's also a way to um, increase my circle of influence. I feel like I have the opportunity to interact with people that I don't normally interact with when I'm in that theater environment, because theater is really a uh, melting pot of a lot of different personalities, a lot of different um, life choices of people that I normally in my daily life wouldn't interact with. And it's been fascinating to get to know those different personalities. Okay, so if you were to put three words on what it means to on all of that that you just said, what would be your words about you? Uh, growth, because it takes me out of my comfort zone. Okay. Um, three words. So growth, uh, facing fears, and relationships. I guess that's four words. Okay. So growth, facing fears. How is facing fears different than growth? So for, for my way I would define it, growth is when I take the classes and I'm, I'm in a structured learning environment, whereas facing fears is getting up on stage and interacting with people um, in the theater environment, which is an environment that's fairly still new to me. And again, it's interacting with people that are not necessarily of my choosing. It's people I'm cast with and just are all there together with me. Okay. So, so two things that are coming out as you're talking that I'm curious about 
is in your body language, and there's a whole bunch of getting ready. So there's, so why, what is your, what is your attachment to the getting ready? And here's, here's why I'm asking that because, um, because as you, as we're looking at our goal, we got to behave as the goal, not as the past. And the past is the getting ready. If I'm going to get cast in a role, does that make sense? So I get ready, but then I get cast. And so we want, I want to know where is the disconnect in you about it's okay to be cast instead of I've got to get ready because everything you've described and everything in your body language messages are about the getting ready process. And, and so this is why I asked that question. What does it mean about you if you don't get cast? Because you're, you're turning all your focus into, I must not have something or I would be getting cast. It's a factor of control. When you audition for a part, you have no control on whether or not you're going to be cast. Um, so the only thing I can control in this scenario is my preparation for what I bring to the audition or the callback. The fact that I'm getting callbacks would tell me that I'm at least in the running. I'm not. So the first thing you have to kind of remove is, am I even auditioning to the right place? Like if I audition in New York, I'm not going to get cast. Like that's just, you know. So what can I do to impact whether or not I get cast? I can come prepared. I can, you know, learn the arts of those three things of character acting, singing and dancing. Um, I can make sure I don't do anything stupid when I'm in the uh, audition experience. But whether or not, ultimately, whether or not you get cast is up to the director and, and the people that are involved in putting on the production. So I could, I could be perfect. That's all in- true. That's all true. But the problem is that you also have control over the feeling of what it feels like and what it means about you. Um, and we don't always think about that because you're you're very focused in your doing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that because that's kind of your personality is you're very good at doing. And so that's why the very first thing that your brain comes up with is what I have control over is the preparation. But we do need to have some focus on the end result that's more than doing. Because there's there's doing components, but there's also um, there's also if I can get my oh I guess I got to share my screen. Let's see if you can see it. Um, so these things that we can organize, we can organize for sure our behaviors, and that's what you're doing with your preparations. Is you're organizing your your doings. But we also need to organize our thoughts, our emotions, our beliefs, and our perspectives. And so that that right there is a different language and a different um, a different preparation than just the singing and the dancing and the um, what do you call them the the trifecta, just yeah. the yeah the, the trifecta three things. yeah. Um, we also need to we also need to organize these other things. And so the reason I asked you the question about what does it mean about you is because as you're talking to me, you your hands do a lot of pointing to this lower area of you, which in body language in body language signifies self worth or meaning about self. And so we one of the things we can organize is what do I believe about me? What is it that I believe about me if I get cast and if I don't get cast? And if I'm big, and then if I'm not getting cast for a long time, am I viewing this as experiences or are they experiences that are defining me? And where you're very much a doer, very much a doer, it there can there's a disconnect often between the what I actually feel and believe and what I'm doing. 
And it's part of what makes you really good at acting because you can separate those. But for getting your goal, we got to pull them back in because how what you think it means about you will send out messages, not just your abilities. And being able to be fully authentic in a, in a part means you got to be able to pull those emotions back in. So one of the preparations that can happen is to, in your daily life, pull those back in. So it's not just what can I do, also what can I feel? What can I, can I feel prepared? Can I feel, um, what would be the word? I don't like the word worthy because I don't think that's one that resonates with um, what you need. I had to find another word, but it, it, do I feel like I have the enoughness? We'll keep using my wording I've been using today. Do I feel like I have the enoughness to be um, chosen in this part? Do I, can I, what is my view of the future of me having those parts? And being able to sit in the, the feeling of that in the present, because I'm, where am I? Here I am. In the present, I need to be able to feel what the future feels like. And, and sometimes I focus on the past by going, I need to be more prepared. Okay, but when I'm prepared enough, what does that feel like? When I'm prepared enough, how do people see me? When I'm prepared, so I'm pulling myself this way. When, I, when all of that's happened, how, what am I like up there? Does that make sense? Right, yes. Okay, tell me what you're hearing. Which is exactly why I came on today is I figured there had to be something in those thoughts, emotions, belief, and perspectives, because like you say, it's not in the, it's not in the taking the class or doing that. So that's, that's why I thought, well, maybe there's something that I'm projecting beyond the amount of preparation I'm putting in. So one thing I've noticed with my singing is I've become more relaxed in my singing. Like I've, I've, I've accepted that I can do that. When I was first starting singing, it was like, oh, this is terrifying, you know, cause I've never sang. And so then I started taking, and even my vocal coach has said, wow, I, I, I don't really know why, but over this last six months or so, there's been a level of relaxation. And I know exactly why that is, but um, maybe there's other aspects of that where I haven't found that level of acceptance and relaxation in that I can do this. And I'm to choose your word worthy of the part. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Very well said. And, and I love that as you described that your body language settled quite a bit. Because there's, so the getting ready, the getting ready body language is a lot of this. This is very much getting ready. If you guys ever notice yourself doing this or fidgeting with clothes, this is getting ready body language. But as you described this last bit, you, you only shifted a little bit and settled more into it. So I love your description of your singing has relaxed. That's what we want in your in your feeling of your future. You want the feeling of your future to relax. Because like you said, this isn't a pressure of livelihood. This is a, this is a pressure of, of, I just want to achieve what I'm trying to do. And right now it's not working and it was before. And I want to do what I, I want that feeling back. Well, we need to relax into that feeling in the future. We need to relax into that and go, yeah, you know what? Because it's like right here, facing the future is an act of faith. And what faith is, is believing that the future possibility and believing that what it feels like is okay to access in the present. Because what we tend to do is go, well, I haven't done enough, so I don't have permission to access it yet. Well, actually we do. We can access it now. The, the, the cool thing about um, humans is we can time travel. We have, our brain can time travel. It can go into the future and imagine what that future will be like. 
But the problem is we usually use that skill poorly and we time travel into our past, even if it's just yesterday. And we worry about not enoughness and what we did or what we said and or why am I not this yet? And we keep pulling ourselves back there instead of using this amazing ability of time travel to go into the future and say, all right, but wait, what if it is like this? What if in the future I'm ready? What does that feel like? When I'm there, what is it like? And that, that is a superpower that few people access. And as an actor, you are, you are training the same muscles, Vicki, as goal achievement. They're the same ones. And so if you practice what I'm teaching you here, it's the same thing as getting ready to audition. Does it, do you see the correlation? Sure, yes. Which, yeah, I super want you to get another part because I'm like waiting for my invitation to come watch you, right? Because I want to see. Um, and so you, I would call your prescription, you need to settle. You need to settle into the part of your future. You need to choose your own part that's your future and settle into what that feels like. That hard, makes hard to envision what that looks like. And that's exactly what you're describing. Yeah. And sure, it's hard to envision, but that's what an actor does. They go, right. what's it like to be somebody I'm not? Right. And it's like, oh, so that, that's what you got to choose. What is it like to be this person that you are choosing for your future? Because if we don't choose it ourselves, if we don't settle into that future vision, we're waiting for other people to decide it for us. And, and sometimes it's hard to disconnect that because it's like, well, I, I don't get to choose. Like, like you said, I don't have exactly. To... I am waiting for someone else to decide that for me. I am waiting for the director to decide. Like I can only bring myself to them and mm -hmm. say, here I am. I'm awesome. Choose me. But at the end of the day, I can be the best choice in my opinion. And they can decide, nah, my brother's wife is really the better choice. You know what I mean? There, there's, there's quite frankly, some, some factors that I can't control in Absolutely. this scenario. And that's fine. I mean, that's part of the game of theater, but. Uh, but this yeah. one, you can, this yes. one you can control yes. more than you've been, than you have been um, controlling. I don't love that word, but you can utilize, let's use that. You, you can go. utilize yeah. this one much more than you've been utilizing by looking at this as a role that you want to apply for. I'm going to practice the role of the future me. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, well, that's a fun role. What would that person act like? What would that, what would they walk around the house like? How would they, and, and what you just described in your singing, how would they relax into it? Because that's really the mark of the difference between a good actor and a not good actor is their ability to relax into that role. 100%. And so, yes. So you need to relax into the role of you in the future. What does that feel like? What does that sound like? What does it taste like? What does it settle like? So that it's not, I've got to get ready more. Because if you go into the next audition, and they don't choose you, and you come out saying, I've got to get ready more, then you're still living in your past. But if you go into the next audition and you come out and go, well, there were parts out of my control and I am still the person that it chooses my future. That's very different than, oh, I better go get more, more preparing done. It, it like changed. you say, there's a limit to how much preparing I can do because of the 72 hour rule that you have taught us. So right. I'm not really taking any more classes right now because until I can utilize those things that I've learned in a role, there's a limit to how much knowledge is valuable going forward. So what I'm saying is you have a role that's been offered to you that you haven't chosen yet. That's a great way to put it. And it's your future role. So practice all the stuff you've learned 
in that future role of you. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so, so tell me what you're gonna do. I'm gonna present myself in my callback tomorrow, which I have, <gasps> as someone who is already successful in theater and being chosen for roles and just enjoying the opportunity to be at a callback. Yeah, I like that. Um, like, I think it was, um, well, there's a few actors that have said this, but most of them say that they become their most successful when they go in it to just have fun. It's not about the result. Absolutely. It's yeah. hard to remember that when you're in the moment, but yes, absolutely. absolutely is true. I agree with that. Well, just like people are saying in the comments, they're like, I can't see myself in my future. <laughs> and it's like, right, <laughs> we're all actors in training. And it's like, how do I choose that role? How do I settle into that role? And um, in fact, I think it was Matthew McConaughey that said that the way he got his breakout role was that they he was in the right place at the right time. They just needed somebody. But why right. they chose him was because he was willing to settle in and have fun. And how many of us are not willing to settle into our future and have fun in the present because we think the present is defining us that from the past, that the past is defining our present. And, and, and the thing is, that's what faith is, is believing that when I'm on the path, I am arriving where I set out to arrive. And, and we get all kinds of messed up messages in our world that try to tell us we can't choose that but we actually can. It's, it's choosing our role and behaving in that role. So I'm really glad you came on first, Vicki, so everybody could have the example of an actor that gets to choose into a role. I think that's brilliant. I love it. And everybody wants to come to your next play in the chat. <laughs> well, a lot of them are in Utah, they can. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. So Faith um, is... May I restate that just so I can make sure it's in my head? Yes, please do. So faith is believing we're on the path that will ultimately guide us to achieving our goal. So look at it this way. If I say I'm going to drive to Oregon and I go and I get in my car and every few miles I stop and I go, man, I'm not in Oregon. So that's proof I'm on the wrong road. And then I change to another road. And then I'm like, dang, I'm not in Oregon. So that's proof I'm not on the road. We need to believe in the path as much as the destination. And that's what we forget a lot is that the path is part of the destination. Agreed. Okay, I understand. And, and so too often, we faith is connecting the path and the destination together. That's what faith does. And, and people probably should write that down. Um, faith connects the path and the destination together because um, disbelief wants to disconnect them. It wants to say, if I'm not there yet, maybe I'm on the wrong path. But if I keep saying, if I'm not there yet, maybe I'm on the wrong path, I can't enjoy the journey and I can't stay on the path long enough to arrive at the destination. Right. You have to commit to the path or there's no sense. But committing people. is believing that the path leads to the destination. That's right. what the Agreed. faith, that's what the faith part is. Yep. So we want to believe that the path we're on leads to our destination. That will help you settle in to your to your auditioning and to um, relaxing into you like you relaxed into your singing. You need that. Just relax into Vicky because you've got tons of evidence from your past, all these great parts and all these things you've gotten to do and, and way faster than other people and at a later age than other people, all kinds of comparisons, but those aren't going to get you where you want to go. Now, settling into you is going to get you into where you want to go. Interesting. Great. Thank you, Anne. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on stage. It was good to see you. I hugged good to you. see you. <laughs> Long distance hug. I know, right? That's awesome. Okay, can everybody give Vicki a round of applause for coming on stage first? Yeah, thank you for being first. Thank you.
Absolutely. Let me know your results, Vicki. I will. Um, well, I'm a little behind on the chat. Let me catch up here really quick. Um, Awesome. Great comments, you guys. Um, thank you for framing the future role this way. Yeah. Wasn't that cool that we had an actor come on first? Um, I'm having a hard time seeing me in the future, in my future. That's enough to stop me from moving forward, right? Maybe that's why I do a project then stop before I finish. Right, Catherine? Did that, did that, um, did that make sense, what I was talking about? that the, the destination and the path have to be connected and faith is what connects those together, right? Okay, and so just so I recap, because people are like, what were you watching in her body language? So you probably saw her, she had some, some bigger body language, which was helpful to see. So she did a lot of the getting ready, a lot of her gestures as she gestured, gestured like this. And so to me, when I see that, that's telling me I'm storing something here. And this, this section right around our right below and right around our belly button is about sense of self. And, and so gesturing there, that's why I asked her the questions about um, what does this mean about you? And so that's how we went down that path is I ask questions, I watch the body language answers, I ask another question. We don't ever, um, this is a, one of the problems with some body language experts in the world is they, they go from one body language move to meaning. You can't do that. You gotta, you gotta hear the whole message. Um, and so that's what I was watching is I was watching how she responded to each change in my questions. And she was very open. Good job, Vicki. Okay, our next person on stage. Oh, we need to raise our hands again, huh? So there's my hands. So who would like to be on stage? Raise your hand for me. Oh, cool. It's different people now. I love that because that means that you realize I'm not mean or terrifying. Because sometimes people think I will be mean or terrifying. But... I'm really, my intention came from my mother. And my mother was a kindergarten teacher all of her life. And she taught me to create an atmosphere of love and acceptance where people feel safe to learn and grow. And so people can't be forced into betterness. Do you hear that? People cannot be forced into betterness. Instead, we have to be willing to try something out. In fact, the, let me find, I, I don't always know what order at a hot seat I will need my slides. So thank you for waiting while I find the right slide. If we want to have change, we can't be forced in, well, we can't be, that's a broad word. Sometimes we can be forced into change by situations in our life, just like, um, just like Christine brought up in the chat. But when we're, when we're choosing our own growth, we need three steps to change. We need awareness. We need to know we can't be behaving off of our subconscious patterns. We need awareness. We need to know what the choice is. What are the options? And then we need to take action, imperfect practice kind of action. And that's how we get change or growth. Um, okay, so our next person on stage is David Patrick. David, you are next. Give David a round of applause, everybody. All right. So welcome, David, to the stage. There he is. Hey, 
Woohoo! Hey, David. So good to see you. All right, you can't go too far away because your microphone's not very loud. How about now? Oh, much better. Thank you for fixing that. That's much better. All right, David, welcome to the hot seat. Thanks, Tell guys. me, how are you doing? Doing all right. Yeah. yeah? So what help with goals would you like today? Well, um, I've got some I've got some big campaigns that I'm working on. And sometimes I don't see them all the way through. And that bugs me a little bit. And I've had some good campaigns, I have some good successes, but I don't, I'm worried that I won't, you know, see it to its full potential. And I see a really big opportunity. Ahead so what's a, what's campaign. a campaign? Tell me oh, what. Um, right. So I run a financial planning practice at an insurance agency. And we, um, we help people realize their hopes and dreams that deal with money and planning. And it's a ton of fun to do financial plans with people. Um, and this particular campaign is working with people that have 401k plans. Most people, many people have a 401k plan, but they don't really know how to uh, manage it. There's not a lot of education that goes into how to do it. Um, markets go up, markets go down, and they, they're not sure what to invest in. And so we come in and we build I'm gonna pause. I gotta pause you, okay? Sorry, because yeah. I'm just watching a lot of. So I gotta ask another question. Please. So forgive me for interrupting. Um, but you're doing really great. So you got out of your pocket. So that was good. So we could start seeing some messages here. Yeah. So what does that mean? You don't follow through. Um. Well, I just um. It's a pretty big campaign that I want to do. And I want to tell a lot, get a lot of people to, to the help that they need building financial plans for themselves. And it's it's going to require my time, and I'm already busy, and I'm already doing well with my time, and I'm successful. But this is kind of another level of business for me, and I'm a little nervous about following it all the way through. And the potential is that I could, it's not just for me, it's something I can have other uh, financial advisors be able to do this and replicate it and scale it up. And so many, many more people could do this particular program. And I want to see it all the way through. And I'd like it to be worth, worth so something. So why don't you trust people? Uh, um, it's a fair question. Um, you know, I don't know, sometimes it, I kind of feel alone out there and, um, I don't know, people have disappointed me and, um, that's, yeah, that's honesty. So. Okay. Well, that's why you don't follow through. So how bad do you want to follow through? What, what, let's ask it this way. What's the cost if you don't follow through? Let's do numbers. Who, how many people, what's the cost in people? Honestly, it could be tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. What's the cost in dollars? Minimum three million. Okay. And Minimum what's three. what's the cost? What's the cost in um growth? That's that's steep because I don't want to disappoint myself. I want to I want to have a big accomplishment. Okay, so there we are. So the problem here is disappointment. Other people have disappointed you, you have disappointed yourself, you, 
there's a lot of, of um, things didn't go the way I wanted them to go. So who are you angry at? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, besides myself, I guess. So I'm going to just go there for a second, because part of the problem we have is that when we point anger at ourselves, it's a chicken exit, because we we don't want to point anger where we're actually anger, angry, so we point it at ourselves. We all learned this at child, as children. If we'll point anger at ourselves, the adults will let us off the hook better. And so we all use that as a chicken exit. Um. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of upset with my wife, honestly. Um, even some of my children, I'm a little upset with them. Um, I've had employees that did wrong and that can't do anything about it. Um, I've been upset with um, church leaders as well. Something else coming to mind besides that. How about God? Uh, I want more from God. Yeah, I want more. I love how you soften all the words. I'm not angry, I'm upset. And I'm not mad. I, I I want more. It's I I love that about you, David. It's like this is who who you want to be is this gentle giant person, but there's these emotions. Ah! So you your body language is doing a lot of holding in, especially at your elbows, and the only time your elbows leave your side the whole time is when you talked about, um, what's the word I want? Um, using more people, having a team of people is the only time, one time that your elbow ever left your side. Mm -hmm. And so there's elbows in is a lot of self-protection. It's a lot of trying to contain, okay? So if you want to accomplish big things, you're going to have to let go of the protection you're using of um, trying to contain protection and containment. Those are our words. So our word with Vicky was um, settle, settle in. Our words with you are protection and containment. So you've, you've got this protection and containment going on. And, and it's just like vulnerability is a, is a, um, if you open the door, the wind can come in, but so can the dust. The sun can come in, but so can the bugs. Well, containment is the same thing. If you're going to contain, if you're going to close the door, you're going to keep the anger and the disappointment and the upset in, but you're also going to keep the accomplishment and the growth in. They can't get out. And accomplishment and growth need to get out in order to get bigger. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, um, and so for you, we gotta, we gotta open the protection and containment trap door. That's the problem. So you've got this trap that you're in and it's almost like you've got ropes tied around you down to your elbows because there was only one time that you could get out of it and that's other people but other people disappoint you other people anger you other people cause emotions in you that you don't want to have just curious by show of hands does anybody ever have emotions inside of them that they don't want to have oh yeah just you know like most of us no big deal so so what are you going to do about it david I guess I've been stuck, so. 
I guess I, I'm a little bit at a loss how to get out of this protection of the gate. And I, I'm a little, yeah, I don't know. Stronger goals, but discipline, but I don't know what that, I don't want to, I don't want to be stuck in the same cycle. And I, so, so I'm going to, I'm going to say something I wouldn't normally say, okay. but you've got big goals. Why are you and I not working together? Why aren't you mentoring with me yet? You got big goals. You need to get past quite a few things. And that's what having somebody that has eyeballs on the outside helps with. So just saying, we may want to have a conversation. I'd like that. Yeah. I think that would be a good idea. And it's been too long since I've seen you. So it's pretty know. cool. I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> so, so let me give you some starting places. Okay. So one of the starting places is we're, we've got to um, let go of, we've got to get a um, pressure relief valve installed. You need a pressure relief valve because you're trying to contain too much, but at the same time, you're trying to push to big goals. So we need a pressure relief valve so that you're not a pressure cooker and you can feel safer opening the floodgates. And, and so that means that can start with, well, I think we need to start smaller. Um, Let's, let's, let, I'm just thinking through you here for a second, because the first thing you did when you came on stage was you stuffed your hands in your pockets, okay? And, and that's not uncommon. People will do that because they're afraid of their own body language because somebody's watching them. I, I get it. That's why I'll ask questions to get hands out of pockets. Um, but then the temptation is to go back to at least a hand in the pocket, right? And like this. <laughs> yeah, I mean like that one. Yeah. <laughs> and so what what that can say and this is what I check in with is I'm hiding things from either somebody else or from myself. And so that's why I use that word containment. You're you're trying to pretend they're not there. So honesty with yourself is going to be one of the first steps to get out of containment and protection mode. Um, and, and so honesty with self can be having a finish the conversation very loudly in your car or helicopter or whatever you happen to be in and where you are saying, I am angry at these stupid people. And actually maybe even use the word anger because you try to soften things so much you need to know, David, there are no bad emotions. None. There is not a single emotion on this planet that is bad. It's what you do with the emotion that's the problem. And so give yourself permission to actually feel the emotions you're having towards wife, kids, leaders, God. Because they're all, the emotions are always valid. And there's probably a few people on here that need to hear that. Emotions are always valid. We're worried they're not because as kids, we're told, don't be fill in the blank. Don't be angry. Don't be, um, don't be rude. Don't be stingy. Don't be lazy. We're told not to be these things, but emotions are always valid and they're never wrong. And I, I'm really careful with superlative words, okay? Because always and never, they're usually not a um, good idea to use those words. But in the case of emotions, really, we get all tripped up in the idea that my emotions make me bad. Your emotions don't make you bad. And feeling an emotion doesn't make you bad. Now, if you go start, um, doing very bad things with your emotions, that's a different story. But feeling them is not wrong. In fact, feeling them 
is, is like taking a shower. We have to do it on a regular basis to keep ourselves clean. So I need to feel my emotions to keep my inside emotional system clean. So in a place where you are safe from other people hearing you, being able to express as loud as you want that I feel angry at you. I feel angry at you because you know what? You're dumb because anything you say in private is okay. It's flowing. It's if you take and record that and send it to the person, that's the problem. Do you hear the difference? But we try to hide things from ourselves and say, oh, no, 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 no. I can't hear that. I can't say that. If, I, if, if, the, if the air hears it, then I'm a bad person. No, you are a human who needs to flow their emotions. So that's one place that I would start is with honesty with yourself. And, and are you somebody who likes to speak more or write more? I do a lot of, I, I do both actually. I'm comfortable with both, but I, I definitely have drive time in my car so I can have conversations. Good. There. And I would suggest that you have a volume knob that you've put inside of you that you have attached to your value, that you're not allowed to be loud or it makes you something. You've put an attachment to that volume. And so I would suggest turning up the volume knob when you have the conversations alone in your car. I can do that. That makes sense? Yeah. Because this will start you on the path of opening those gates because you're gonna have to be able to open bigger and bigger and bigger in order to accomplish big $3 million, 10,000 people goals. Mm -hmm. So if you're still, if you're here trying to manage, um, how many kids are you angry at? Three. Three, how many leaders? <laughs> uh, Any number, it's not. Sure, yeah, it's say 10. 15? 10. 10. So 10, 13, 14, 15 people you're trying to contain right now, your anger, and we probably could add to that list. You're going to have a lot of trouble opening the doors for tens of thousands to have help. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me, teach me what you're hearing. Okay. So I need to work on expressing myself and getting my 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 anger issues my disappointment with people out in the open and on the table at least for myself to get it open not to them necessarily and um because i'm just trying to control things like too much and um i'm not being able to fulfill all my goals as a result yeah so do you, how bad do you, or how bad, uh, how much do you want to help? Do you want to do these big campaigns? What, how, on a scale of zero to a hundred, how much drive do you feel inside of you that you need to do that? Um, it, it, it's way in the nineties. Um, you know, there are also competing things in my life as well for time and, and effort, but it's clearly in the nineties because it's it's something i don't know i just feel it really inside of me okay so based on your body language right there i would say that part of the reason you have this drive is because there are i'm just going to speak to you right now there are ancestors and other worldly forces that are very interested in your growth and that they know that you having a drive to help other people will grow you. This, you might feel like it's about them, but there are people interested in you, David, and your growth, and you matter that much. And it's completely valid for it to be about you. 
for you to matter that much. And so for you to be given the opportunity to help tens of thousands, it's because you're pretty awesome. You matter. So it's time to do some letting go. And, and I can help you with some things that will help in deeper levels of that letting go, because it's time for you to be at a different level. You can kind of stuck, it looks like, at for a while on a level. And it's time to leave that level. You're needed at a higher one. Sounds good. Okay, what are you going to do? What are your action steps? Well, I've got some uh, conversations to have. And then I'm going to reach out to you. So we'll, we'll talk about mentoring. And um, and I'm just going to keep working hard at this, this campaign. It's, it means a lot. So I'm going to do it. Keep going on it, but we got to work on you for sure. Um, I love it. Well said. Um, <laughs> Lillian says, I think I am David. <laughs> <laughs> you too, Lillian. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and Alicia says she needed to hear this today. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks for being on stage today. It was good to see you. And I'm yeah. super excited about your future. Thank That's you. pretty, pretty dang cool what you've got going on. I'm excited. Thank you very much. Can everybody give David a round of applause for being on stage, please? Turn up the volume when no one is around. Yep. I love it. Okay, did anybody learn something from David and Vicki so far today? Raise your hand for me if you learned something from them. I like Lillian says she is David, so she's got to have learned something. That's good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. Um, we, I promised I, we would be done with this webinar at 9.30, and that's in 10 minutes. Um, but I do want to bring one more person up on stage. So any of you who are able to stay later, that would be fantastic because I would love to be able to, um, my goal was to have three people on stage. And so I'm still going to do that. Um, but you just gotta know that you might have to stay a little later for that. Is that fair if I let you know that ahead of time? Um, okay, cool. So let me show you, let me show you something. Um, So when we're looking at a goal, this is, so this is a post. So I made these, these screenshots for you, right? I made the, the pre goal questions. And then here are areas that we can make a goal in, right? You can just um, look at those really quick. And here's the visual. So I could probably put these next to each other. Let's do that. Okay, so here's a visual of areas and here's wording on areas that we can make a goal, that you can set a goal. So uh, if you don't know what area to set a goal in, that's what these pre-goal pre questions were for, okay? But now here's some post goal questions. What if I've set a goal and I don't know if it's a good goal for me? Has anybody ever thought that? Well, one of the things that you can ask is, will this goal be difficult? You may not have considered this before, but if the goal is not difficult, why does it have to be a goal? How, or, uh, that's probably, I may, I'll say it this way. If the goal's not difficult in some way, is it going to grow you? Is it going to grow you? Um, okay, then the next question is, 
am I willing to start at the beginning or be honest about where I am starting from? So, so this is this is something that we we learned from both Vicky and from David today, is that um, is that when I'm when I'm going towards a goal, I am not at the level of my goal yet. And sometimes I don't know why I'm not at the level of my goal yet. So I need to be able to be honest about where I'm at so that I know what the path is to get to where I want to go. So honesty with self is going to help me to be able to move down that path. Um, and so then I also have to see, am I willing to treat people up ahead of me and behind me? Because whatever my goal is, there's going to be people ahead of me that have already done that or done bigger things. There's going to be people behind me who haven't done what I've done or have done sm or are at smaller levels. Can I treat both directions with respect? Can I tr treat both of them with respect? Then am I willing to develop the knowledge, self-control and discipline necessary to accomplish this goal and define them? So this is one of the things we just did with David. We said, well, what is the, for him, it's emotional. We, we, we lump it all into self-control, but it's, it's emotional flowing that needs to happen. He needs to open his gates of protection and containment to get to that higher level. Is he willing to do that? We define what am I going to have to do and am I willing to do it? Because if I'm not willing to do it, then the goal is just going to be there to beat me up with instead of help me. Am I willing to bear witness of the path and the growth? So this goes along with what I was talking about before. We need to connect the path and the destination together. We need to understand that they are a, um, they're a, what do you call that? A, um, they come together. They're a, there's a term for it. I can't think of it. Um, but they're a, they're a joint package. Okay. They come together. You don't get the destination without the path, but you have to be able to believe the path leads to the destination. Um, and then am I willing to believe the end of the path while I'm on the path? So those are two parts of what we talked about with Vicki, right? That that path, I have to connect the path and the destination together. So um, I'll call the next person in just a minute, but I, I just want to give you, I want to show you this. So the problem in our world, the problem when it comes to goals, the problem when it comes to our own growth is that we can't see everything that is in our way. And that's why I do these hot seats every month. And you can, you can tell your friends, you can invite people to these, they're free, they're online. You can come to them every month because I dedicate my life to using my body language skills to be those eyes on the outside that can help you see where you're stuck. Because when, one of the things that's interesting um, is that the results in our life, the results in our life are trying to tell us something. They're trying to tell us something because everything on this planet is set up for your growth. Everything. The fact that we are in a timeline that has to go from past to present to future. We can't go backwards. The fact that we have chaos in our life. The fact that we have disorganization. All of that is set up so that we can have a chance to get bigger, better, brighter um, for our growth. It's all set up for our growth. But sometimes we, um, we have things that expand to fill all of our space. Things like worry, impatience, responsibility, stuff. So like, um, oh, David, I wrote on my list and forgot to tell you, you want to probably add time to your anger list of conversations that you have of why you're angry about being held to time. Um, these things expand to fill us and they, they will 
they will cause us to see our world a certain way so that we can't move forward towards our goal. Um, so we need to, we, we need to have, and, and some of the indicators that we're doing that is we might have coping pattern, pattern language, like, well, I can do it tomorrow, or I can't change, or it's not my fault. Somebody else is the problem. Um, I'm going to wait till somebody else fixes this, uh, and then I'll do it. Or it's too late. I love how Vicki said that she started her acting career later in life, um, as if Vicki's old, right? Um, but I, that speaks so well to it's not too late. It's never too late. My mom, my mom was growing on her deathbed. I spent, I spent the last six weeks of her life in her room with her as she was dying. And she kept asking for mentoring. And it was, it was an amazing experience. Um, it's not too late. The world will end tomorrow anyway. So what's the point? or I need someone to save me. Any variation of this language is an indicator that I'm stuck in coping instead of creating. So who has ever been stuck in coping instead of creating? Tell me, tell me in the chat, do you cope or do you create more often? Which one? I want, I want you to be accountable. Which one do you do more of, coping or creating? Right, I go back and forth, coping, coping. Yeah, usually coping, more coping, right? We do a lot of coping. Coping is so tempting, you guys. It, it's like junk food. Coping is a junk food thought pattern. It's a junk food emotion pattern. And it has to be interrupted. It has to be interrupted, but we don't always know how. So the solution, the solution to you getting to where you want to be in your life, the solution is one thing. It's one thing, you guys. It's you. You are the solution. You are needed on this planet. You are needed to stand up and make a change. But you got to know you don't have to make all the changes at once. Growth is a path that you step on. And, and if you're stuck in coping, it's because you're, you're wandering around looking at the yellow brick road, so to speak, and the yellow brick road, you just won't step on it. You just won't get on the path. You just won't get on the path because you're afraid of something on the path. But if you don't get on the path now, when are you gonna do it? If not now, when, right? And so I, this is why, this is why what I do every single Monday is I hold a group mentoring class. And in that group mentoring, I teach people exactly what I see in the world that is holding people captive. And I give them simple, actionable steps to take to practice being on the path. To practice being on the path. So who here, who here is in my breakthrough coaching or in my personal mentoring? Either one. If you're in that or there's a few, there's a few people here that are in my breakthrough coaching. In there, tell people in the chat, do you ever get homework in Breakthrough Coaching or personal mentoring? Do I give you, and is the homework doable? Is it doable? Because that's the thing. How many times do we get life homework that we don't know how to do it? We don't know what steps to take. But the reality is, I know how to take things and make them into actionable, simple steps. And so I can't just use that for me. So I created the breakthrough coaching to have a place where the steps you take grow your ability to create your life instead of cope your life. That's what I want for you. I want you to create your life, not just cope with your life. 
And so, um, so you, you, I love this little guy pointing at you, you, you think of that as the little you inside of you. That's just like, please come on. I've been waiting to be this adult and I want to be on the path to my growth. I want to be there. And so breakthrough coaching is a, it, I use mind, body, and emotion science to help break through past programming. I help you believe, build, build belief in yourself and your abilities through consistent practice. Um, yeah, Vicki's been in my personal mentoring. That's how, that's how I knew her. Um, I've been in your classes and personal mentoring. I've had actionable steps I could take to grow into a better version of me. Because today, you guys, I gave actionable steps to take. But in, in Breakthrough Coaching, every single week, I'm walking you through. In fact, if you like this getting on stage option, in Breakthrough Coaching every week, people have the option to turn their camera on. And I'm watching everybody as I'm teaching. And I'm watching where people get stuck. And then sometimes we have the opportunity to do a little personal mentoring right there in front of everybody, just like we're doing today. Um, so breakthrough coaching, usually at three key element high level programs, it's 6,000 for a course like this that lasts for 14 weeks, 14 weeks. The regular price for breakthrough coaching, 3,400. Most places, that's what they're going to charge you. But this class, it includes, it includes 14 weeks of live training. It includes six pre-recorded modules, a detailed plan with direction, accountability and support, weekly mindset and emotion set equation training, and Ann Washburn coaching. So that being said, what I'm going to do today is this. Um, you are going to get, um, trying to decide which set of bonuses here that I want to give. I love that Vicki says, I often hear your voice in my head asking me what else could be true, right? It's one of my favorite questions. Um, who could use 14 weeks of coaching, of getting on your path to creation instead of coping. Raise your hand. I'm just curious if anybody would benefit from that. Where are my hands? There they are. Oh yeah, there's the hands. Awesome. Um, creation over coping. So tell me in the chat, what do you choose, creation or coping? Oh, I love it. Jeannie says, I just renewed for another 14 weeks because of what a valuable, because what value I found. Creation. I love it. Kathleen says, eight years later, Anne is still in my head. Creation, creation, creation. Yeah, create and then share it, right, Catherine? Excellent. Um, I Way to be honest, Brittany says, I choose creation. However, right now, I am coping a lot. Yep. Way to be honest. I love it. Okay, so based on that, I'm going to tell you this. For I have a, a QR code right here where you can book a call with me where I will, I will talk to you. I will ask you mentoring questions and I will, let me make sure that my link is working. Um, and I will answer your questions about breakthrough coaching. Yeah, okay, I've got lots of times available. Okay. Um, and so you, if you book a call with me, I'll answer all your questions. I'll answer all your questions about breakthrough coaching or personal mentoring. So if you've ever wanted to do personal mentoring with me, I currently have two openings for personal for new personal mentoring clients. And then if you would like to do breakthrough coaching, you can use this same phone call. We can talk about either one, okay? So what'll happen, try it. Um, use the QR code or 
in the chat, Adam put the, the link. You can click on the link in the chat and click on it and notice it's going to ask you some questions. So it'll, you'll pick a time, you'll pick a time um, that you wanna have the call and then you will, and I gotta fix this. It's, Okay, there we go. Um, you, you, you'll pick a time and then it's gonna ask you some questions. And what do questions do, you guys? Do you remember? They open a door inside your mind for more information, for more growth. So if you wanna be open to more growth, be willing to ask more questions, be willing to answer more questions. And so the, the QR code is right here. The link is right there. Go through and answer the questions. Even if you're not sure if you want to book the call, go through answering the questions because the very last button will be confirmed. So you can go through the whole answering the questions part and have a chance to have more mentoring. So the thing is, normally this class is 3,400. Today, because you're on this webinar, I'm going to make it 1997. 1997 for 14 weeks, you guys, for 14 weeks. But here's the thing. The first five people get a special bonus. Um, so, but you know what? I'm going to do this for everybody. Everybody who joins Breakthrough Coaching from this webinar. So you can book a call and you can talk to me. You sign up for Breakthrough Coaching. I'm going to gift you a one-on-one -on -one mentoring appointment with me where you and I will get on Zoom, just the two of us, and I'll answer any questions that you have. I will help you with whatever you need help with. And that right there, if you book that separately, is a $970 value. So I'm going to gift that. I'm going to invest that in you. Who would want to meet with me one-on-one? -on -one? Or am I too scary? Just curious right? It's, it's really fun. It's really fun. Hey, oh, not everybody. Okay. I guess I'm still scary. <laughs> I love it. So I'm going to gift that to everybody, but the first five people who register for breakthrough coaching. So you got to book a call. You got to book a call or you got to message me in the chat and say, Anne, I just, I want the slot and I'll send you the link right now because this is limited to the first five people will get a thousand dollar scholarship towards breakthrough coaching. So the first five people get a thousand dollar scholarship. And that means, yes, it would be 997 for the whole 14 weeks for those first five people. So how do you do that? You, you schedule the call, you book the call, and you, where is my book the call screen? Um, you book the call, here it is. And if you don't want to take the chance of not being one of those first five people, then you just message me. Okay, Olivia, you want that? I will message you the link privately. Um, so anybody who wants to just have the link and be able to register, you can still book a call with me and you still get that private one-on-one -on -one appointment with me. Um, but you'll make sure and lock your one of the five in. Okay. Oh, so I've got two people that have locked one in. Um, I got to type and talk at the same time. All right, here you go. So there's your link and let me know that it works for you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Um, so two, there we go. Awesome. So you can still book your phone call with me. Those of you that are taking advantage of being one of the first five people, you can still book your call with me and we'll talk but you can lock that in right now. Let's see. And this link, um,
Okay, there you go. So that link that I sent you, it'll tell you all about the class and it'll, it has your $1,000 scholarship already applied to it. Cool. All right, any questions? Any questions? If, any, if there's any questions about this offer, then, um, okay, there's another person. Okay, awesome. There you go. If anybody has a question, and then as soon as I'm done with questions, I will open it up for the next person on stage. Okay, did that make sense? So book your phone call, book your phone call with me. It looks like all of the time slots are in next week. If you want to be able to talk to me later today, I do have some openings, but the calendar can't access same day appointments. So go ahead and book a call and then message me in our chat and I will, I'll reach out to you today and tell you what times I have available today. Okay, so I've got three people who've claimed the one of the top five spots. Good job, you guys. I am so excited to have you be part of Breakthrough Coaching. So here's, Here's just a picture of somebody who went through breakthrough coaching recently. And this was her bedroom before. And she told me I could share these pictures. I asked her. And this was her bedroom. And that was her goal when she came to class. Um, um, Adam, can you help with that? I don't know if you can. Jeannie says that she filled out the questions and it told me Calendly is not valid. Has anybody else been able to get the, to be able to get the Calendly link to work? I do want to make sure, thank you Jeannie for letting me know. I want to make sure that works. Um, okay, so this is, this was her goal, you guys. This was her goal was to, um, was to get her room cleaned up. Do you think that was a hard goal? Because remember I asked, will it be a hard goal? That actually matters. Absolutely hard goal. But, and she and I, she held her one-on-one -on -one appointment with me and this is what we talked about. Um, sorry, I'm answering the questions as we go. Great questions, you guys. Yeah, it was definitely a hard goal. And she and I held her one-on-one -on -one appointment. And in her appointment, I helped her through the mindset pieces that were stopping her from getting this part of her life organized. And here was the after picture that she sent me. And it's so just, it, it still makes me wanna cry because I'm like, such a huge difference, such a huge difference. And I just want you to know that just like a picture is worth a thousand words, your example, just like a picture is worth a, a thousand words, um, your example is worth a thousand lectures. Okay, Livia, I'll get back to you. Can you, Adam, can you write that down for me? Um, people can tune out a lecture, but they can't tune out your example. And it's never too late to improve your example. And that's my intention for you. That's my intention for you, is that you have a chance to improve your example. All right, let me see if I can make this work. Okay, Livia, yeah, it's already applied. If you look in there, I just tried the link and it worked. 
So that is not correct. Okay, so any other questions? All great questions you guys have been asking for sure. Um, yeah, so in the link that I sent you, it, it will have the $1,000 scholarship already applied. So the $1,000 scholarship will make it a total of 997. So in your link that I sent you, it'll show that price because your scholarship is already applied. Awesome. Excellent. Okay. All right, great questions, you guys. Okay, so now it's time. Let me lower the hands. Who would like to have a chance to be our last person on stage today? Our last person on stage. Raise your hand. Okay, it looks like Calendly's working. I've had several people book their calls. So that's working. All right. Okay, we're gonna have, they're just checking for your waivers and we'll see who is going to be next on stage. Could you show the screenshot with the questions about goals again? Questions about goals. So let me find that while we're waiting for our last person. So this one right here, the post, post goal questions. There you go, Kelly. There you go, Terry. All right, awesome. Okay, cool. All right, so our next person on stage is going to be Kathleen Taylor. Oh, okay. Awesome. All right, give a round of applause to Kathleen. You guys, this has been so much fun today. Holy cow, I have loved this. And I'll just tell you, I know, um, actually, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you this screen. Um, when we are, when we're going for a goal, usually what we do is we, so let me, start here. What we usually do in life is we look for evidence of what we we see evidence. Um, and then we pick a belief based on that evidence. We pick a belief, we go, Oh, that person wasn't very nice to me. And that validates that belief that I'm not worth being nice to. And now I point blame outside of myself. Uh, we look we look for what we believe. So now this cycle becomes cyclical. I see this evidence, it supports my belief. So now I can blame other people or other circumstances. But if I'll turn this equation around, if I will create my goal story of what it will feel like, what it'll look like to accomplish my goal, and then I create a belief, what would somebody have to believe to accomplish that goal? And then after the belief, I look for evidence of that belief. Now I will arrive at the result that I want. That's what I need to do. But I needed to figure out how to, how to put this into my life. 
So I got a great example this week. This week, as I was getting ready for this webinar, every day something tried to knock me off kilter. Every day something tried to knock me off my path. Here I am. I'm like, I want to do this webinar. I want to help people with their goals. And then I had, I had um, relationship problems. I had health problems. I had people challenging me problems. I had, I had, um, I had problems with organization of all kinds in my life this week. They were, some of them were really hard. In fact, I, I just sat one night and just cried because I'm like, this is super hard. But the old me would have said that evidence, it, that is evidence that I'm not made for doing this. I'm not made for helping people. I'm not able to help people. And then I would have blamed all of those circumstances on the reason I couldn't do what I wanted to do. I would have blamed them. But the new me was like, well, wait a second. I have a belief and a story that I'm here to help people with my body language skills. So I'm going to look for evidence that that is true. I'm going to look for evidence that that is true. But what's cool about that is it changes the lens you look at experiences of life with. So when all these things tried to swipe my feet out from under me this week, I reminded myself that when obstacles come, it means I'm on a path to becoming better. So write that on your paper. When obstacles come, I'm on a path to becoming better. And, and that helps you go the last little bit of distance to your goal. If your goal is going to grow you, you will run into obstacles at, as before you accomplish the goal. So write that down. If your goal is going to grow you, you will run into obstacles before you accomplish the goal. We're wired to find evidence of what we're looking for. So look for better, you guys, look for better. And that's what I did this week. Everything I teach you, I have to use in my own life. And that's how I know how to use it is because I have to use it. Okay, so everybody welcome Kathleen as she comes up on stage. You need to unmute my dear. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, because we want to hear you and see you. There we go. Awesome. Oh, she's even all dressed up in a dress, just like she was ready for this. So tell me, what do you struggle with with goals? So my biggest struggle is deciding what a good goal is, because I really feel like I want nothing. So it's just like, whatever comes to me is great. I'll just accept it. Um, so really saying, no, I want this and I'm going to go for this because, and I don't know if it's a God thing. Like, I don't know. Um, ha, ha, ha. Now I'm super self-conscious of my body language. <laughs> I know. I do that. Too. Um, um, like, I know I can have anything that he wants to give me, right? But I'm single. And so I'm looking for a relationship. But at the same time, not really ready for a relationship. And then I have three businesses. And I'm looking to grow those businesses. Also, like, trying to play small in all three areas. So, like, wanting to set the goal, but actually setting it and going for it are completely detached. So we got to go back to what you said. I can have anything that God decides to give me. Yes. So why does he have to decide to give it to you? It's a great question. Um, I don't think that he does have to decide it because he's already given it. Like he's already said, you can have anything you want. So like he's not going to choose each little thing for me, but whatever I decide, like I need to make that choice. It's, um. I feel like I'm rambling. <laughs> You're doing well, I, That's okay. I'm just watching your body language. I'm not even listening to you. So. And there's a lot of it. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so what I teach people is as a parent, when your child comes to you, it, well, it's their birthday, right? 
and you want to give them a good gift that they're going to love and that they're going to cherish and take care of. And you're willing to get them anything, but you want to know what they want. What are they going to cherish? What are they going to use? And what color do they want? Right. So being very specific about what it is that we want in our lives. And so I can teach a lot of the principles, but I'm not applying them in my life. And so what do I do with that? So why aren't you applying them? Because I'm lazy. I mean, because <laughs> you're not applying them because then you have a chance to blame God. Do you think it's God? Well, because what you said was God can give me anything he wants, but then you qualified it and you're like, oh no, because God said I can have anything, but then you're like, oh, but I'm not going to choose. So you need someone or something to point at so that you can say, that's why it didn't happen. Instead of I'm, I can choose whether this happens or not. <clears throat> so when we value our problem more than the solution, then we will need to blame so we can keep the problem. So you've been my friend for a bit and followed a bit of the process. And I feel like that was absolutely 100% true five years ago and one year ago, right? And I feel like the last six months, things have shifted. So how do I pull myself wait, wait, wait. out so of wait. What does that mean? The last six months, things have shifted. Tell me what that means. It means, well, I feel like I've le been learning how to take responsibility for those things and not go to that blame place. Cause that was absolutely what I did for years. Um, but I feel like I've practiced that radical responsibility where like I'm taking responsibility for myself, but my words are not reflecting that and neither is my body language. So what am I missing <laughs> in my logical brain that says, no, you're doing this, but it's not happening. You're like, you're like the patient that comes to the doctor's office and they're self-diagnosed off of Google before they show up. Absolutely. <laughs> so so you tell me why are you not doing it how does it serve you to not do it I don't know because I feel like I I am doing it but then but but, but, you, just, but you just said your problem was you're not doing it right so which so is I can't see myself clearly <laughs> so just for everybody else's benefit Hmm, maybe not. For some reason, my computer will no longer. There we go. So here are some reasons why we will hold on to a problem. These are called the perks of the problem. Um, and so we will we'll hold on to problems. I'll make it bigger. We'll hold on to problems for these kinds of reasons. They don't have to be these exact ones but we'll hold on to them for these kinds of reasons. So it can be, I need the problem to hold somebody accountable. I, my identity is how strong I am having problems. I need pity for my problem. Um, I need proof I've been mistreated. Teach me to try to make this pretty in front of everybody. Um, a desire for control, an excuse, um, a past unhelpful rule. I, I um, now avoid, I can now avoid the work. Known problems are safer somehow. Um, these are just some of the reasons why I will hold on to a problem because problems have value. You won't do anything in your life that doesn't value you in some way. Did you know that? Yes. And Kelly says, the problem holding list is my checklist. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, and so that's what you got to look at, Kathleen, is what, what, what value do I get from not doing this, from not accomplishing, from not doing what I teach people? Because I, 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 I've totally been there in my past where it's like, I teach people this all day long, but why would I have to do it myself? Um, but so if I can become clear on what I get out of not accomplishing it, then I know what value, what problem I'm valuing. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And so what, and, and one of the things that we can value, so let's see. Um, 
one of the things I can value. So like David, you do when you do personal mentoring with me, one of the things I do is give you that Clifton Strengths Finders test. And then I show you what lens you look at your life through. But sometimes we got to look at the junk food lens that I look at life through. So like for you, Kathleen, you value fun. You value getting to convince other people. You value getting to um, talk about things. So the doing isn't in there, okay? That's not, that's not the fun. So yes, God has said, I'll give you whatever you want, but he's also said there are divine laws about doing the things that get you what you want. And so you doing is like going to the gym. You have to do something every day to become what you want in the future. And you just don't like going to the gym. And so you stay home and go, oh, I'll teach people. That's fun. I'll, I'll, I'll not want anything because that's fun. Because you're, and, and fun, don't get me wrong. A lot of people can't do fun very well at all. You are really good at fun. But we need to be able to do, take the bitter pill in, for lack of a better term. And you've got the spoonful of sugar. You just keep eating the spoonful of sugars and forgetting the bitter medicine with the, with the sugar. Because you know all the stuff. If you did the stuff, you get the results. True? True. Okay. So what do you value more than creation? If, I want to say the pain, but I don't, I don't believe that. Like I, I think no, I did. I don't think, I don't think you I value think. pain. But it's like you said, what you would like to do is create a relationship, but you don't want to. There's no room in my life right now. <laughs> okay. So it takes so a lot of effort. It takes that work to have a relationship. I don't want the work. I just want to have fun. I just want to go play and go on dates and hang out. I don't want so the hard again, conversation. The path and the destination have to be connected. Yes, they do. So as long as you only value destinations, then you can't really want anything because you can't go on the path to get there. I don't know what I'm hearing. <laughs> okay. So, so that just means this is a new neural pathway for you. Cause yes. if you don't know what you're hearing. It's like, wait, it didn't connect anywhere in my head. Like logically I understand to accept the path and the journey, but like, what does that look like in my life? I have to, in, in order to be married and have a fulfilling relationship, I have to be willing to have the hard conversation. I have to be willing to do the stuff. Well, you need to start with why do you two lists? Why do I not want a relationship? And why do I want a relationship? Okay. And is that equates the same thing in the business? Like, why do I want to be successful in this business? And why do I not want to be successful? Like make the two lists of why and why not? So, so you can do that for sure. But in the relationship, you need to be clear on that. When it comes to your businesses, you tend to do your, it sounds like you're doing more to not have to accomplish anything. And, and so the problem there is more like a budgeting thing. It's like, well, I only have this much time. What do I actually want to do? What, what do I want to create? Because we, we can tip into FOMO and FOBO all the time. I'm, fear, I, I'm afraid of what I'll miss out on. I'm afraid that there's a better option. I've got to do mm -hmm. everything so I don't miss out on anything. But then I miss out on everything. So yeah. the planet is set up that you can't have everything. Just so you know. Everything is not an option. And, and that's on sure? purpose. I'm absolutely sure. You can have everything after this life. Uh, during this life, everything is not an option. And here's why. Because if everything were an option, you wouldn't have to make choices. And choices are one of the most important things you do on this planet. 
So but you, then I'm held accountable to those choices that I made. <laughs> in the past? Well, even like today, you know, I was not going to cry. <laughs> Okay, why does it come to accountability? Why does it? I can make choices. I'm capable of making choices. Okay, but what does making choices mean to you? Responsibility and work. Okay, so you don't want to make choices. No, because I can deal with what comes to me. But if I go out and seek something, then I ask for that. And then when it's hard, it's who do I blame? Holy cow, that just went really full circle. <laughs> yeah. So what you value is your ability to blame. That makes me lame. <laughs> ah. And I've never seen that before. Think, I mean, in today's life, you know? Okay. So, so I get to make choices today. To, yes, and you need to make some new definitions because you've got a definition for accountability that is painful and you've got a definition for choices that's painful. And, and your life doesn't work well on pain. You work better on fun. So you need to redefine choices and accountability that they're not there to flog you with. They're not there to, to beat you down. Choices and accountability are not for that. That's, I, I just did an entire class in Breakthrough Coaching two weeks ago on accountability and how it empowers us, not beats us down. Because you're not, you're not meant, Kathleen, to be beat down. That's not what creation process is. It's an empowerment, but you got to let go. Some of the things you need to let go of are definitions that are hurting you. The need for blame is hurting you. you that's the junk food coping mechanisms. Hey, I can do that. I might need a mentor. <laughs> Don't forget to hold me accountable. For I, I volunteer. <laughs> I've I've practiced a little bit. If you want one that's if you want a mentor that's practiced, you're very good at what you do, Anne. <laughs> Thank you for trusting me, Kathleen. Thank you for being here. Absolutely, because I believe in your future. Absolutely, a little this more is, than I do. <laughs> If that's what it takes, that's what I chose when I was in the parking lot of that Walmart. I went in and I saw all these people with less thanness coming out of them. And I chose right there. I said, I am going to believe in people's future instead of their past. Because people keep walking around trying to believe each other's past. They keep saying, here's my resume of my past. Do you believe my past? Look at my past. Looky, looky at my past. And I'm like, you know what? I am done looking at people's paths. I am here looking at people's futures. So if you want somebody who wants a resume of your future instead of your past, pick me. Because that's, that's what I'm here for. And it's absolutely what I need. Because I have been through a lot in my life. And people validate that over and over. Oh my gosh, you've, you've gone through this. And you survived this. And you did that. And look at you. You're doing it. You know? And it's like. So that's, I think, why I go back all the time. It's like, yeah, I have done that. But it's like, I need to focus on what I'm, what is coming, what I want to do, what I want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's Whoa. what we forget all day long. All day long, we're sucked into our past. And I am here to believe in the resume of your future. That's what I'm here for. So quit getting sucked into that past that wants you to believe that's who you are. The past isn't who I am. It's just experiences. And here's the radical statement I was going to say earlier. Your past is perfect for you. Your, nobody's past is wrong for them. Sure, there can be sucky, awful things in people's past. And trust me, I've heard way more things than I ever thought I could have even come up with in my head of terrible things in people's past. But that doesn't mean your past 
it needs to be labeled as wrong for you. It's what you choose in your future. That's what matters. God cares about your future, not your past. And we know that because he created an atonement. He cares about the movement into your future. He does not care about your past. We are the ones that keep putting that definition on that God is going to analyze my past. God cares about your future. He made a savior for your past. Go make a future. Quit living in the past. Thank you, Anne. Thank you very much. Okay, so what are you going to do? I am going to redefine choice and accountability, and they're going to mean something more to me with fun versus flogging myself with them. Um, and I am going to make choices, and I'm going to, I might, I might have to re, like, look at that blame list again and kind of see, I mean, as I was going down, it was most of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so I need to look at that um, and just be aware, because like you said, awareness is the first step awareness is really a, a great place to start from so um thank you for helping me be aware of that and to be able to continue to make choices because i i have good things coming and i am going to go far so i'm choosing absolutely. that absolutely absolutely see i love that resume of your future yes that's what i want why do we keep writing our resumes of our past write the resume of your future for the future the right right this is my right i don't know what yes. it looks like on screen <laughs> Yep, that's your right. Very good. Absolutely. I love that. Um, there was one other thing I was going to say. Now I forgot. Shoot. It'll come back. But that's that's it. That's absolutely your next step. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Awareness is the only place to start from. It's not a good place to start from. It's the only place. You can't start from anywhere else. If you're unaware, you can't change. So awareness is the only place to start. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for being on stage, Kathleen. You're awesome. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> you're welcome. Everybody give her a round of applause for being on stage. All right. Did you guys learn something from each of them? Holy cow. I think this is one of my favorite hot seats ever. The people that were on stage, that was really fantastic. Um, I love that. Let me catch up on these. Um, I love it. Yeah, we're not broken, you guys. We're not broken. We're not not enough. We're not any of those things that have been beliefs that we've picked up along the way, okay? We might have picked up beliefs in our past, but that doesn't mean the past is who I am. I am me, and I had experiences. The past isn't me. Does that make sense? I am me, and I had experiences. Say that out loud. I am me, and I had experiences. I am me and I had experiences. And here's the resume of my future. Anybody ever drawn a resume for their future? I didn't think of it till today. So I need a resume of my future. And if you want my help with it, you guys, please schedule a phone call. Please let me do what my life's purpose is, which is to help people access more of their amazingness. I'm never going to hold you in your past. The world might do that. I am not going to do that. That's not what I'm here for. I am here to help you access more of your amazingness. And if you're not going to access more of your amazingness now, when are you going to do it? Choose, you guys. Oh, I'm a little animated, but it's only because I care about you. Book a phone call with me. Let me help. Let me, let me help you access more of your amazingness. Let me, let me stand up for you and fight for you, even when you're not willing to fight for yourself, because I believe in you. So book that phone call, okay? And remember, the first five people get to be part of Breakthrough Coaching for less than half price. Oh my goodness, you guys, that 
does not come along very often. So the regular price is 1997. That's the regular price. If you go here to this link, 3ke.to forward slash breakthrough, it will tell you all about breakthrough coaching. It'll tell you all about it. But if you're one of the first five people to register, you will get a thousand dollar scholarship. And I will give you a special link that has that thousand dollar scholarship applied for you. Okay. And so I know I had three people take advantage of that. So I still have two spots left. So book your phone call or register one or the other. I believe in you. I believe in your future. I believe in who you are becoming because guess what? Just like God cares about your future, that's what I care about because I am not going to believe people's less thanness. Mm -mm. It almost crushed me that day in Walmart and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to believe in your amazingness. I'm going to help you face your future because that is who you are. Um, that is who you are. Right? Oh, I love all of these comments, you guys. Okay, so tell me in the chat, tell me in the chat, what action are you going to take because you were at this webinar today? Tell me what action you're going to take because... If you learn new things, if you don't take action on them, if you don't take action, then you're then you are feeding your past. If you don't do something new, you'll have to relearn what you learned today. If you don't take a new action, you are not believing in your future. So take a step into your future. Take a step into you. Okay. I love it. Everybody's got to tell me what you're going to do. What are you going to do? Because you came here today. All right. I love you guys. Thank you for being part of this amazing morning and listening to me get all wound up about what I'm super passionate about because I'm here to help people engineer their future. That's what we're going to do together. All right. Okay. I will stay on and answer questions for a few minutes. Have a fantastic weekend. And all of you that I get to talk to, I can't wait. I'm so excited to just pour love and attention on you because you matter. You make a difference. You are here to be more than your past. So let's rise up and let's do that. Let's break through. Let's break through and be more than we were yesterday. That is a beautiful thing to be, is if I can be more than I was yesterday, then I'm on the right path. You guys are awesome. I believe in you. Mwah.